Most of you have likely experienced some sort of headache during your lifetime. And even though some of the most common headaches, such as tension headaches and migraines, can be extremely annoying and painful, they don't typically cause a major problem with this wonderfully important structure that we call the human brain. However, there is a phrase that most ER clinicians don't love hearing from their headache patients, and that is, this is the worst headache of my life. And it came on out of nowhere. This is an extremely concerning warning for the thunderclap headache. And this is an extremely painful and serious headache because it can be life-threatening. And so, let's find out why. A thunderclap headache is kind of what it sounds like. A severe headache that strikes suddenly, like a clap of thunder. And when I say suddenly, we are talking reaching its full intensity of pain within 60 seconds. Imagine just sitting there, drinking your morning coffee, watching Institute of Human Anatomy videos, and bam, out of nowhere, you're hit with the worst headache of your life. Now, there are cases where it can take longer than 60 seconds, but the key is this sudden and severe onset. So what could be causing this violent onset of pain? Well, there are multiple causes of a thunderclap headache, but the most common cause is a brain bleed known as a subarachnoid hemorrhage. And this is bleeding into a space called the subarachnoid space that we'll take a look at on the cadaver dissection. Here we are looking at the top of the left side of the head, and I'll start by removing the scalp. Kind of cool. Take a look at that. And underneath, you can obviously see the skull that I'm also going to remove. Now, a lot of students expect that when you remove the bone that you're going to see the brain directly underneath. But we also have protective connective tissue coverings that surround the brain. And these connective tissue coverings are called the meninges. Meninges just means membranes. And these meninges will help us to understand a subarachnoid hemorrhage and ultimately this thunderclap headache. The meninges are made up of three layers. The first one that you are seeing here is the thickest layer called the dura mater. And it actually translates to tough mother. The anatomists of old mistakenly thought that these were the mother tissues because they thought all the other tissues of the body were derived from the meninges. They obviously ended up being wrong. Mm. However, the name stuck. But if I reflect the dura mater, you'll see another thinner layer that's actually collapsed onto the brain. And this is called the arachnoid mater. It looks like the saran wrap on top of the brain. But arachnoid meaning spider-like mother because it has some little tissue beams that resemble spider webs. And I said collapsed onto the brain because normally in a living person, this arachnoid would be pushed up against the dura because there would be fluid, specifically cerebral spinal fluid, between the arachnoid or underneath it, but also just between the arachnoid matter and the deepest meninge known as the pia mater. Now, the pia mater means delicate mother, and it is the thin, transparent connective tissue layer that adheres to the surface of the brain and spinal cord. The, you can't distinguish the pia from the brain with the naked eye. And here is another view of the meninges that gives you an idea of how it surrounds the brain. Here you've got the dura right here, and with my probe right here, you can see that arachnoid mater as well. And so we have this space between the arachnoid mater and the pia mater where the CSF flows to create a protective hydraulic cushion for the brain. And this space, because it is underneath the arachnoid mater, it is referred to as the subarachnoid space. And this is where we get that subarachnoid hemorrhage or the bleeding that ultimately leads to the thunderclap headache. And think about this subarachnoid space. It surrounds the whole brain, even goes down and surrounds the spinal cord. So a major bleed into this space could cover a significant portion of the brain. And if the bleeding continues, eventually this will start to put pressure on and compress the brain and will lead to other symptoms besides just the severe headache, such as loss of consciousness, vomiting, and neck pain or stiffness, because again, that subarachnoid space will continue around the spinal cord. And if left untreated, this can lead to death. But taking a quick break from all the gloom, doom, and death from brain bleeds, Let's quickly talk about bringing life to your colon by saying thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Seed. Seed's DS01 Daily Symbiotic is a broad spectrum probiotic and prebiotic that is designed to support your gut health, skin health, and much more. This is delivered in Seed's Via Cap, which is this cool capsule and capsule delivery system that acts as a barrier to oxygen and moisture, as well as protects against stomach acid, enzymes, and bile salts so that the probiotics actually make it to the colon where they belong. 
With Seed, you get 24 clinically and scientifically studied strains, which is the first of its kind. Seed is also dedicated to sustainability, and with your first purchase, you'll get a glass jar that is infinitely refillable, and the monthly refills come in compostable, biodegradable, and recyclable packaging. And the packaging is just the beginning, because once inside your wonderful colon, these probiotic strains can support gut barrier integrity, improve gut motility, and ease the process of stool evacuation, if you will. So if you're interested, you can get 15% off your first month's supply of Seed's Daily Symbiotic by clicking the link in the description and using our code ANATOMY at checkout. And now, back to the thunderclap. So what caused the bleeding into the subarachnoid space in the first place? Well, we can blame a brain aneurysm for that one, specifically a saccular aneurysm. An aneurysm refers to a bulging artery, and a saccular aneurysm is a specific type of aneurysm where the artery balloons out on one side creating a sac-like pocket, hence the name. Now, there are a couple of problems with an aneurysm. One is that an aneurysm like this can quietly grow over time, meaning there are no symptoms and the person has no idea they have one, kind of creating somewhat of a ticking time bomb, which leads to problem number two. As the aneurysm balloons or stretches, it weakens the wall of the artery, making it more susceptible to bursting or rupturing, which, as we've learned today, can suddenly lead to the subarachnoid hemorrhage and this thunderclap headache. Now, let's talk about treatment. Clearly, if anyone has a thunderclap headache, the first step is to get to an ER ASAP. But unfortunately, according to some population-based studies, anywhere from 18 to 24% of patients with a thunderclap headache caused by this subarachnoid hemorrhage died suddenly prior to even being evaluated in the hospital. But those that do make it to the hospital, they will work to stabilize the patient, which would include blood pressure control, IV fluid administration, imaging such as a head CT to confirm the bleed, and if they find a bleed, the treatment will likely involve surgery to fix the ruptured aneurysm and stop the bleeding. Now, there are some cases of a thunderclap headache that are not caused by a subarachnoid hemorrhage, so those would obviously be managed differently. But those causes are less common and for another video. Now, I want to be clear about something. Even though it is kind of freaky that an unknown aneurysm can suddenly rupture and bleed into the subarachnoid space, and cause this thunderclap headache, these headaches caused by this mechanism are not very common. In a systematic review and meta-analysis, the overall global incidence was about 7.9 per 100,000 people per year, which is about 0.0079%. So clearly not very common. But even still, is there anything we can do to reduce our risk of this? Well, yes. And in a way, this is really about reducing your risk of developing an aneurysm. Cigarette smoking appears to be the most important preventable risk factor. Heavy smokers have a higher risk than lighter smokers, and people that stop smoking will decrease their risk over time. Hypertension, or high blood pressure, is also a major risk factor. There is obviously a genetic component to your blood pressure, but there are also multiple things you can do in your life to help reduce your blood pressure, as well as medical management. And I have a much more detailed video on how you can lower your blood pressure that I'll link at the end. Moderate to heavy alcohol consumption also appears to increase one's risk. Key point is moderate to heavy or excessive alcohol consumption. Now again, the point of this video was not to have you all walk around all day worried about having a ruptured aneurysm that results in a thunderclap headache. Again, they aren't very common. Plus, the topics we discussed to help reduce your risk, avoiding smoking, managing your blood pressure, avoiding excessive alcohol intake, all of those are just good health practices that will also reduce your risk of many other health conditions. So hopefully you learned something new and interesting about this thunderclap headache and even some cool anatomical structures that relate to the subarachnoid spaces and how we protect our brain with those cool meninges. But thank you for watching and supporting the channel, and we'll see you in the next video.